So if it is the back, in most cases, it's going to actually be in and around the lumbar vertebrae, uh, the lower lumbar vertebrae, around about L4, L5, or even in the sacral uh, part of the actual vertebrae. Now, assessment-wise, it's pretty straightforward and um, easy enough to do. So what you're basically going to do is hold your hands flat and you're going to come straight on to the top of the iliac crest. And in doing so, it's going to bring you down onto L4. So it brings you down just below spinous process of L3 and actually onto the L4 vertebrae. So therefore, you've got a strong indication as to where you're actually going to be situated on that. So if we were to turn the spine onto the side and we were to do the same thing again, what I'd be doing is holding my hands flat in that position. I can come across there and as I come forward, it brings me onto my L4 just below my L3. So if you're doing that on both sides, you know exactly where you're actually going to be landing on the spine so it gives you good indication what you would find is if it's on the right side and i was to palpate over the right facet joint then i know it's a strong indication so you just go between both of the spinous process l4 l5 come lateral to that and you're pretty much onto the facet joint so you'll be coming about a centimeter to centimeter and a half lateral to it and you'll be pressing down slightly onto the facet joint if that elicits pain and you do the same on the opposite side then that gives you a strong indication if you're getting the pain on the right side that that is where it's coming from if the plantar fasciitis or heel pain is actually noted on the right side so you'd work your way down each of the vertebrae from around about l4 l5 and do that uh, and see what results you actually get and map that back to the actual heel itself. So again, uh, another demonstration, this time I'm actually doing it on somebody to just show you how quick and easy it is to locate L4, L5 and just to check whether the pain is actually coming from the back. So it's the same beforehand, use your hands, you're flat, nice and flat and what you're going to basically do is to come in, put your hand on top of the iliac crest uh, and you can start to come across now this hand will now be on L4 it will be my thumb resting below the spinous process of L3 I can do the same again coming from the other side and do the same again so I know I'm below L3 my hands are nice and flat in that um, particular area so there's my spinous process of L3 um, and I'm just below that. So if I'm going to check the facet joint, I can come across onto the facet joint and apply a little bit of pressure. Now, this is on the right side. Now, if the problem's on the right side, I compare the right and the left side over the facet joint. Now, if my right side elicits more pain than my left side, and in some cases, you may well find that pain may well radiate down into the leg. And that will give me a strong indication that the problem is actually emanating from the back. So let's say, for example, my L4 is fine. I've just come back to where I was before, work my way down. So now I'm below uh, the spinous process L4. I'm on um, the lumbar vertebra L5. And I just come across again to my facet joint, apply pressure onto my facet joint to see whether there's any discomfort on that. Um, and then I do the same again to the opposite side and compare my left and my right side to determine as to whether there's any pain or discomfort. That again will give me a strong indication as to whether it's referring down. And then again, I can start to work my way down and palpate over the sacrum and to see whether any of the sacral joint, the sacroiliac joint is causing any pain or discomfort. And again, if I'm finding my right side is more uh, uncomfortable than my left side, that'll give me a strong indication if my foot pain is on the right as opposed to the left. So therefore it'll link the two together. So that's pretty much all you're basically doing is just checking the right side of the back for somebody with right-sided foot pain and also the left side of the back for somebody with left-sided foot pain and you compare the left with the right um, and whichever side if it coincides with the side in which they've got the foot pain then that's a strong indication that the problem is actually coming from the back in itself. 
Coming back and looking at the nerve supply to the low back. Now there are a number of um, nerves that will actually run down from the back into the feet. The majority of them is mainly coming from the tibial nerve as opposed to the peroneal nerve and it'll be branches off the tibial nerve. But if you look at the uh, calcaneal branch, that will serve the plantar and medial aspects of the calcaneum. So it is important to, that you do palpate that nerve and whether you get any tenderness, but also along the um, medial plantar nerve and the lateral plantar nerve, you may well get some tenderness running around along those. And that is a strong indication that it's coming from the back. So those would need to be assessed um, as part of your assessment to determine as to whether any of that is actually coming from the back. So if we were looking at, um, at what level of the back, you can see that if the plantar uh, medial nerve is tender, then what you'll basically find is that's L4, L5. If it's directly underneath the heel, that's S1, S2. So they will need to be assessed and checked. So trigger points. As we've mentioned beforehand, there's three key trigger points that you need to look at. Those ones are mainly the adductor hallucis, brevis. Um, that one is quite an important one. As I was saying beforehand, these trigger points is three, and they are quite common in the presentation of plantar fasciitis. So you do need to eliminate that. You do need to check for all three of them. You do need to palpate along that muscle and make sure you check all three and not just seek out one of the trigger points. You do need to go along all three of them along the course of that muscle and make sure you apply your pressure. So pressure in itself, grade it on a naught to 10. You need to be putting around about four kilos of pressure, ischemic pressure, whether it's your thumb, whether it's your finger, or whether you use a certain massage. I was just looking for my little um, pressure device there, which I did have in here, but I'm not sure what I've actually done with it, um, which you can actually apply the pressure to the area, hold it. It just takes some of the pressure off your thumbs. Your sports therapists, physios, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, it just allows you to apply pressure into those, localize it without um, utilizing your thumbs too much. Grade the amount of pressure from 0 to 10. 10 being excruciating, 0 being no pain. You want to be round about between 5 and 7. Ask your patient to say when it starts to subside, then to let you know. As it starts to subside, just get them to take a deep breath and then you can ease off on the pressure. But the adductor hallucis. Now, as I was saying beforehand, this particular trigger point will actually weaken the actual structure in itself. So it will make the adductor hallucis that much weaker. Same again, studies have demonstrated with regards to the adductor hallucis, you anaesthetize that muscle and you're going to get navicular drop and you'll get a reasonable amount of navicular drop that will actually take place. So it is important to check the strength um, of the um, hallux. And if it is weak in any way, deactivate the trigger point before you start to strengthen. So it's no good doing strengthening exercises if you haven't deactivated the trigger point because all the trigger point is going to do is weaken the muscle even more and you're going to be like flogging a dead horse to a certain extent. So deactivate the trigger point, then start to strengthen. Coming back to your quadratus plantae, again, do check that. Mainly patients are going to present with heel pain underneath the fatty padding of the heel. So again, just distal to the heel is going to be your quadratus plantae. And that's going to be, again, patients who's presenting thinking they've got a heel spur. So do make sure you do check that particular trigger point to make sure that's not the main causative factor. Deactivate that, give them some stretching exercises for the lesser digits, which will also help to stretch out the quadratus plantae muscle. Now, with regards to the soleus, it's one of the main trigger points in the soleus. That will also cause pain over the back part of the heel. So it is important to make sure you check that and make sure they're not getting that pain and discomfort over the back part of that particular heel. And therefore, um, it does take out the tension. So if they are talking about any tightness within the calf muscle, then you do need to be addressing the soleus trigger point. So do your soft tissue work into the calf then work your way down, assess the trigger point. If it is, 
same procedure again, about four kilos of pressure applied into there, working to their five, between five and seven in the amount of discomfort in which they actually experience. So that's going to be quite important. You do check that. You do have to deactivate it if it is actually involved. Otherwise, they're going to walk around with a tight soleus, which in turn is going to start to tighten up the plantar fascia and you put more load onto the um, intrinsic muscles of the actual feet in itself. So thank you again for listening and look forward to seeing you again on our next presentation. So if you've got any questions, as I said beforehand, by all means, you can leave comments, post questions, other colleagues can answer it within the actual um, uh, your lesson environment uh, and discussion. Otherwise, you can email me, which will be info at stevebaileyacupuncture.com. I can answer any questions that you may well have.